What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content that we have coming out. And with this video, we are jumping into the Reckoning War with Fantastic Four, issue number 40. And to get all caught up, be sure to check out the Reckoning War Alpha. You can find that down in the description as well as the top of this video. And what we have seen so far is that a group of alien warlords known as the Reckoning they have been supplying savage alien races with Watcher technology, with Uatu the Watcher seemingly being destroyed along with the moon. Our Fantastic Four now have to jump into action, doing everything they can to help as many people as possible. Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four, they find themselves out in space, and this is where they encounter Nick Fury. And upon bringing him on board, we see Reed Richards imbued with the power of the Watcher. Be sure to buy the comics, support the industry, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue of Fantastic Four, we are picking up on Obscura Minor. And this is a hidden world that used to be home to the Rosleek. The most reclusive race in the entire galaxy. But now it is serving as the staging grounds for the Reckoning War. And what we are being shown is Wraith. Wraith having the Silent Watcher in his grasp. And Wraith, he is upset because the Watchers decided to no longer intervene in anything going on. Giving their race the gift of the Cosmic Fire. They decided to use this Cosmic Flame and blaze their own path in an attempt to become gods themselves. And when the time came, when these races began burning, when the wars came and the death was upon them, the Watchers, they stood idly by and did nothing. And so this is their revenge against the Watchers, against the universe. They are going to pillage and destroy everything in their path. And with Wraith dispatching of the Silent Watcher with nothing more than just a skeleton in his hands, that is when we are taken to New York City. And we have the Fantastic Four along with Nick Fury headed into the Baxter Building. But one thing everyone is quickly realizing is that Reed Richards, he is not himself. Which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody considering he has all of the knowledge of the Watchers. He understands exactly what they are up against and he knows exactly what needs to be done moving forward. But to Sue Storm and many of the others, this is seeming like he doesn't care, almost as if he is absent-minded. And Nick Fury tries to let them know that you need to cut him just a little bit of slack. Nick Fury knowing exactly what it is like to have the vision of the Watcher. Having all of that information crammed into your head, it takes a little bit of time to really get used to. But with them getting inside the building, this is where they see all of the Fantastic Four kids. And Reed Richards is preparing to get communications with every single hero on Earth. With Reed Richards borrowing the device that they had used to communicate with Silver Surfer, he makes some adjustments to it, and this is when he puts out a broadcast, giving everyone just a little bit of help. Changing the Fantastic Four costume to the original design, saying that this is going to help people in a time of crisis really see something and recognize some kind of symbol of hope. Seeing the Fantastic Four back in their retro style, he believes is going to help people out along the way. And with Reed Richards putting out his broadcast to all of our heroes, giving them some kind of strategy to be able to fight off this invasion, sending Iron Man all of the schematics, letting him know exactly where the weak points in all of this armor is, and how to properly take down these warships. Telling Captain America that he should pass his shield off to Vance Astrophic. Because all Badoons, they share one thing. And that is a deep-rooted psychological fear of the day that Vance will take up the shield and destroy them all. And then we have She-Hulk. She lets Reed Richards know that this is in fact the Reckoning War. 
This is a key moment in history, and she is pretty sure that she is a big part of it. With Reed Richards finding this fascinating, he tells She-Hulk and Jack of Hearts that they need to make their way up to the Baxter building. And last but not least, he talks to Moon Knight, because Moon Knight, he is in a rough state right now. With the moon being destroyed, and his god being the god of the moon, he is feeling this tremendously. But Reed Richards lets him know that he is also the god of vengeance. And so now it is time for Moon Knight to get up, be the Fist of Khonshu, and lay vengeance upon those who have destroyed your moon. Now, Reed Richards has done this in the hopes that this will turn the tide to the battle, believing that Moon Knight, Iron Man, all of these individuals he talked to, they are going to have a huge impact on what comes next. At this point, Sue Storm, she is letting him know that this is not you. And Reed Richards has to agree with that, saying that this, this is a vastly improved version of himself. Right now, there is no problem that he cannot solve. And hearing this information, this is where Johnny, he asks the question, If you have all these answers, then do you have the ability to cure me after Victor Von Doom had turned me into this, this ticking time bomb if you will? And Reed Richards lets him know that he can in fact turn this around. He can reverse everything that Doom had done to him. The only thing is that he is not going to do it. Saying that right now the stakes they are vastly too high and he is one of the biggest weapons in the arsenal. And we see Johnny, he is about to go freaking nuclear. That is until Silver Surfer gets in communications with the Fantastic Four and Reed Richards. And this is where we pick up at Camp Hammond. This is a location where they keep some of the most secret weapons that have ever existed or ever come to Earth. You could call these Doomsday Devices. Having items like the Zodiac Key, the Serpent Crown, and the Ark of the Covenant, this is where Victor Von Doom has found himself. With Doom of course believing that it is his job and his responsibility to save Earth from total annihilation, he has come seeking one of the greatest secrets this world has ever hidden away. And with Doom looking around this place, he finds a temporal anomaly. That anomaly is because this weapon, it was hidden away one second out of sync with their timeline. And with Doom having the most powerful weapon in his hands, he intends to use this as bait. And taking us back to the Baxter building, we have Silver Surfer having a conversation with the Fantastic Four. And right now, he is sending tons and tons of data, giving them images of what is happening across the universe. And he is showing them this to show them that this is what they are up against. Endless conflict across the entirety of the universe. And with Reed Richards seeing all of this information, it all becomes much more clear to him. Knowing exactly what they have to do next, he asks if the Silver Surfer is able to join them in their battle. But regretfully, he is unable to do so, because he is needed elsewhere. The Herald Assault of Asgard has begun, because every living ex-Herald of Galactus is currently fighting to unearth his remains. And with them saying their goodbyes, Sue Storm has to ask the question, are you going to help Thor and Asgard, or are you going to help your fellow Heralds? With the Silver Surfer letting her know that he goes wherever the universe demands. And so, with the Silver Surfer burning off to Asgard, we have Mr. Fantastic who is now building his battle plan. Recognizing that there are events happening all over the universe, but there are only a couple of individual places that are truly the focal point of these battles. Letting everyone know that they need to head off to the Shi'ar Empire. They need to help the Imperial Guard. And with all of these images flipping through, this is where Johnny, he sees Sky's planet. Recognizing that this is her home planet and that they are currently at war, saying that they will not be able to fight whatever forces come upon them. Reed Richards trying to let him know that they need him here. They need him to stay with the Fantastic Four and fight this fight. 
that he forbids him going to Sky's planet. With Johnny taking off to the sky, not listening or hearing any words that he has to say. Reed Richards had anticipated this. He knew what Johnny would do. And that is exactly why he brought on the Jack of Hearts. Jonathan Hart is now part of the Fantastic Four. Using Nick Fury's cloak, he grabs some molecules from it and imbues it into the suit of Sue Storm. Making Sue Storm the most secret asset of this entire war. With nobody able to track her, not even the Watchers will be able to have eyes on her. And Reed Richards lets her know that he knows he has been off. He has been a little bit different and he has been kind of, kind of just out of it. But that is because he is thinking constantly. He is seeing everything. But he promises her that they are going to get through this. They are going to find a way through this war and save Earth. And that is what will bring us to the Forever Gate. And the first one to go through the gate is Nick Fury. Sending him to one of the most secure planets in the entire universe. Only hoping that the Forever Gate will drop them exactly where they need to be. Now the gateway has enough for three transportations. Which means Nick Fury as well as Ben, Jack, She-Hulk and Mr. Fantastic. Someone is not going to be returning through the Forever Gate. They only have enough return for one group of individuals. Nick Fury letting everyone know that this is the Reckoning War. And at this point, we can expect that no one is going to be returning through this gateway. With everyone saying their goodbyes, we pick up on planet T-37X. This is the birthplace of the all-knowing, all-seeing Watchers. And right now, every seeing of our Watchers, they have been brought back and called back. And that is because of Yua 2. He is letting them all know that it is time. It is time that they break their vow. Because the Reckoning War, it is before them. The battles are raging across the universe. And now it is time for them to fight. And with him giving the war cry, we pick up in Shi'ar space. And we see the Imperial Guard, they are completely knocked out right in front of them. Gladiator and his entire squad have been taken down. And that is because of Rapture. And Ben, Ben is kind of terrified of Rapture. Because Ben has seen his death. He knows exactly how he dies. And what he knows is that Rapture, she was there. She is the person who finally kills Ben. Asking Reed Richards if there is some other way. Reed lets him know that there isn't. With everything at stake, with all of reality currently at stake, they have to face this head on. Regardless of the consequences, regardless of any lives that are lost in this fight. But moreover, Reed Richards lets Ben know that his mind isn't working at 100% right now. Because with all of this knowledge, with all of this power, he has also learned that in three days, he will die because of having this ability. Taking on the Watcher's power is draining his life. And so he has three days to end this war, to stop the Reckoning War before all of reality in the entire universe is destroyed. Alright gang, so as we continue on with the Reckoning War, we are picking up on planet T-37X, the homeworld to the almighty Watchers. And Yuatu, he has called everybody here, bringing everybody home, letting them know that the Reckoning War is upon them. The one exception for them breaking their oath has finally arrived. It is time for the Watchers to go to war, letting them all know that he has had Nick Fury going around the universe trying to track down whoever gave the Katati the weaponry that was essentially Watcher technology, trying to figure out who was responsible. That is what brought them to Wraith. That is what brought them to the Prosilicans, the race that became the Reckoning, the race that caused the conflict that took out nine-tenths of the universe. And with their return, for the sake that all that is, that they have to break their oath 
and it is time for them to go to war. And this is where we see his father stand up, saying that he represents the entire tribunal when he says what he is about to say. And that is no. That they will not repeat the mistakes that they have made in the past. That they will not interfere, regardless of the exception that they made. They are going to stay out of this regardless. And if he is forced to take action, the only action that he is going to be taking is imprisoning his son. He does this to prevent him from interfering any further than he already has. With him pleading with his father, saying that if we don't do something now, there will be nothing that can stop them. And that's what takes us to the Shi'ar Empire. And right now, Rapture and her forces, they are coming down and they are killing anything in their path. Their main goal is the Mikran Crystal, because this is a nexus of all reality. If they get their hands on it, if they are able to manipulate it, it can cause unknown chaos. Chaos. It could very likely implode the entire universe in on itself. With Mr. Fantastic doing what he can to hold the army off, this is where we see the Fang jump in and go toe to toe with Rapture. Because Rapture is supposed to be the individual that kills the Fang. He saw this in a vision. He was given a glimpse of his death and it is at her hand. And so as the two battle, as the two of them clash together, we see Rapture get the upper hand on the Fang. This is where he recognizes and sees what he saw in his vision. This is the moment. This is when the Fang dies putting up his hand as she comes down to smite him. We see the thing, his hand, it is still in one piece, believing that it should have been cut right in half, not understanding what happened until he recognizes the ring on his finger. With it being able to absorb her hit, the ring shatters into pieces. Rapture recognizing that this was just dumb luck, she goes to make her swing again, the thing trying to get out of the way, the others trying to reach him in time. But Rapture's sword comes down, and we see the thing, he is split almost in half. Mr. Fantastic, he sees this, and he rushes over, grabbing the thing and wrapping him up. Mr. Fantastic is the only thing keeping the thing in one piece. And so, with the Fantastic Four team relatively defeated, Rapture and the others, they go for the crystal. Because that was their main goal. That was their objective all along, and they are going to no longer mess around with all of these mortals. And so, Rapture and her brother heading over to the crystal, they concentrate, they work together, and the three, they disappear. The crystal now gone, and the both of them as well. And that is what's going to take us to the Human Torch. Picking us up on Spire, they are currently going against Annihilation Wave. And the only thing stopping an Annihilation Wave from taking this planet over is the Unparalleled. Unfortunately for them, they are not holding out very well. This invasion has overwhelmed them, and it will take a miracle for them to get through this. And in the midst of all the chaos, we see Anahylus. He is currently fighting against Sky because Anahylus, he has come here for the cosmic rays. These people, they are soaked in it, and so this is just a feeding frenzy. But this is when that miracle, it begins to arrive, with everyone looking up to the sky, and what appears to be a third sun showing up on the horizon. But this sun, it is getting closer and closer, coming in at incredible speeds. It breaks straight straight through the armada, taking out all the ships in its path, making its way to the land, making its way to the surface of this planet. This burning ball of fury is none other than the Human Torch. Coming in to save the day, he grabs a hold of Anahylus, and he takes him for a ride. And though Anahylus tries to use the full extent of his abilities against the Human Torch, Johnny, he has leveled up 10 times since the last time they saw one another. He has become as strong as a freaking star, and we see how little he is compared to Johnny. 
taking out the cosmic control rod. This makes him essentially nothing, with Johnny telling him that he gets one last word, that if he continues on this path, he will burn him right here, right now, and turn him straight to ash. Begging Johnny for some kind of mercy, he tells him that he will grant it, but all of the ships that he brought here, they are getting left behind. Not questioning this one bit, we see him make his leave, and Johnny comes down to the people, letting the overseer know that he came here for the cosmic rays. He came here to take what you guys are soaked in, but it's also much bigger than that. This was all a distraction, because right now, the universe is waging a war. The reckoning war is now upon everybody, and so Johnny, he didn't come here just to save these people, he came here to ask them for help. And now having the ships to take an entire armada wherever they need to go, he is asking this people, he is asking the unparalleled if they they will fight by his side in the Reckoning War. And while Johnny is giving the speech looking around, he sees this Sky. she has a new soul band. And this, you can feel it. Like, it just wrenches his heart. Like, what's a guy to say? But the truth is, is that her soul band, it is connected to Citadel. She had been intended for him before they had ever met. And so when she came back, it was only natural for her to get back into the rhythm of things. And that meant getting back with Citadel. Now, of course, Johnny, he has to put this to the side. This is something that he can't just, he can't deal with it right now. He's got enough to worry about. And more importantly, there is a universal civil war currently going on. And with the forces now joining Johnny, we pick up in Asgard. Because all of the Heralds of Galactus, they have been called here. And they have been called here for one purpose. That is the resurrection of Galactus. None of them have this control. None of them understand really what is going on until Silver Surfer arrives. Letting Thor know that if you were ever a herald, even for a split second, you are being called to his resurrection. With Thor vowing that after this compulsion has worn off, that he will take down Galactus and he will ensure that it is never possible for his resurrection again. But Silver Surfer lets Thor know that this, it's not in service of Galactus. The universe itself requires that we bring Galactus back. And so as the Heralds are working to resurrect Galactus, we see from Asgard, the Destroyer, with it one time serving as a Herald to Galactus. It is making its way straight to the corpse of Galactus itself. Not really sure what it is doing until it begins to open up. As it begins to open up, it becomes one with Galactus. With the two of them growing together, they become something new. No longer the Devourer. No longer the Destroyer. There is only one name for what rises before them. That name is the Destruction. And Silver Surfer alone, he possesses the one thing that can draw its attention. Stored within the dimensional fold, of his gleaming board, he pulls out the ultimate nullifier. Alright gang, so as we dive into this one shot, we are picking up with Oatu the Watcher currently in shackles, and that is because his father intends on showing him something. While he begs and pleads for all of them to interfere, to break their oath, and stop the reckoning war from happening. The only issue is, Oatu, he's blind. His eyes are not open to what is truly happening. Ikor has every intention of showing him and opening his mind up to exactly what he has done and the consequences of his actions over all of these years taking him to the seat of all knowledge. They are not here to extract information, they are here to show him, because he must bear witness to his actions. For all of the many crimes that he has committed over the last couple of decades, taking sides in petty squabbles, favoring Earth's heroes over its villains, preserving life, repelling invaders, sending individuals back in time to correct history, empowering and depowering humans at his own will, conscripting the Earthling to act as his agent. Oatu the Watcher over all of these years, 
Instead of observing, he has been interfering. He has been going against his oath for such a very long time. His father letting him know that actions have consequences. And more than likely, the consequences of this war are going to fall on your shoulders. That your interference, your meddling after all of this time has led us to where we are in this point in time. Oa 2 believing that all of that was for the good of the universe. That every action he ever interfered in, everything that he has ever done, was to help the universe. Also justifying the actions of Nick Fury, making him his herald if you will. And while yes, technically he has broke many of the rules that come with the Watchers, the truth is he found out about the Reckoning War. He found out what was coming, and now they need to act. They need to set aside whatever this is, and they need to go fight them. Because the Watchers gave them the technology that is now conquering the universe. And so taking action, righting the great wrong, is a moral imperative. One that far outweighs the oath that they have ever taken. His father finding this as a very compelling argument. But his father has two words to say to him. What if? His father not being an idiot, knowing that his son has been gazing at the multiverse, has been gazing at the realities that span across all time and space. He has seen the what-if scenarios. The chamber that they are currently in, it rests right beneath the apex of all reality. And Oa 2, over all this time, he has gazed and seen all kinds of different realities. Watching one what-if scenario after another. His father pouring over all of the what-if scenarios. The entire history of the world. Anything that he has ever accessed. And what he found in there was one obvious possibility that he has avoided. A what-if scenario that he has been terrified to watch. What if Oa 2 the Watcher was wrong? What if he never interfered with humans, with Earth, or anything going on? What if the Watcher just watched? In all the days that he has watched over this planet, he has never broken his oath more severely than Galactus. With him putting up a barrier of fire around the world, protecting it from Galactus devouring what he wanted, what if he had never done that? Instead of trying to hide the planet from the Silver Surfer, what if he allowed a clear, unobstructed path to remain? Instead of aiding Reed Richards and the Fantastic Four, leave them completely oblivious to what is about to come. What would be the outcome? And so, as they watch all of this unfold, we see the Fantastic Four, they are all sitting here making dinner, having a good old time, with Nick Fury coming on the horn and letting them know that there is something coming towards Earth. The Fantastic Fantastic Four being called up to duty to go meet whatever this is head on. And so if the Watcher had never interfered, Reed Richards still would have found out that the Silver Surfer was inbound. Though Oa 2 defends his actions by saying that they never understood the magnitude of what was about to happen. And so his interference, it was very important moving forward. If they are to understand that Galactus is going to devour their worlds, then they might act with more haste. With the Fantastic Four in the observatory observing whatever this is out in space, they see that it takes the form of a human, having a very unique energy signature. What they are seeing is the Silver Surfer. The Herald of Galactus has made his way here, and it doesn't take long for him to come down and greet the Fantastic Four. Making his way down to the Baxter Building, this is where he detects some superior technology and advanced transmissions, but really what he finds are primitive beings. Or at least that's what he says to them. Of course, this makes the thing furious and he has some clobber at time, knocking the Silver Surfer off of the building and crashing through many others all the way to the other side of the city. And Ben knows that he made a mistake here. He let his anger get the best of him and he sent the Silver Surfer flying. But before he was knocked for a loop, he said that he was summoned here by his master. In a matter of moments, we see a giant spherical ship come falling down and Galactus come stepping out of it. Completely ignoring the Fantastic Four, he has come here to devour this earth. Oa 2 and his father continuing to watch and Oa 2 saying, look, 
Galactus made his way there and he was starting to devour this planet. That if I had not interfered, they would have been doomed because the Fantastic Four, they simply can't take Galactus on all by themselves. They are outmatched in every single way. That doesn't stop the Fantastic Four from jumping into action. With Ben and Johnny, they go charging in. Every one of our members are throwing everything they got at him. But at the end of the day, this is Galactus. With the wave of his hand, he sends all of them flying in opposite directions. As they begin to fall off the top of this building, Reed Richards is able to expand out and save them just in the nick of time. Galactus on top of the Baxter building is now beginning to build whatever weapon he needs to take this world in. Owatu's father is letting him know that you already realized in this timeline there was little chance the Silver Surfer would turn on his master, but he made it to where the Silver Surfer's trajectory and landed at Alicia Masters. An individual that showed him what humanity was all about. But if the Watcher had never done that, he would have landed on a car, he would have called his board, and he would have jumped back into the action. Galactus almost having his preparations complete so he can devour this planet. Reed Richards goes inside to try to figure out what he can do. The rest of the Fantastic Four, they are keeping him distracted. They are trying to stall him long enough for them to save this world. Finishing the construction and his twin igniters he goes to put them together the fantastic four though they are able to keep them separate and galactus is quickly starting to realize that while these things aren't insignificant bugs they're really more just annoying gnats that keep bothering him they keep flying in his face and now he's ready to smack them out of the air. Sue Storm this whole time, she has been the one keeping these things from coming together. Galactus recognizes this and he takes her sight from her. With her taking a huge blast of energy, Sue Storm goes blind. And then he calls in some reinforcements, activating his extermination droid. We see the machine, the robot known as the Punisher. Keeping the thing occupied, we have Johnny Storm getting hit behind him from Silver Surfer. Our Fantastic Four, they are getting taken out one by one. Reed Richards, he is working as quickly as he possibly can. It looks like all is about to fail. This looks like the end of the Fantastic Four and all of Earth. The Watcher seeing all of this and it is only confirming everything that he believed. Only confirming that his actions to interfere, they were necessary. The Human Torch, he begins to go off. Recognizing that they are outmatched, recognizing they might lose this fight. We see Johnny Storm, he goes nuclear. He goes supernova. Using every bit of energy that he has, he thrusts it directly at Silver Surfer. Knocking the Surfer off his board, falling down to the ground. Johnny finds himself burnt to a crisp and also falling as well. And though their efforts are valiant, they fail to stop him from connecting the twin igniters. With the connection made, this Earth starts to be devoured. Inside the laboratory, Reed Richards, his face, it looks like it is beginning to melt. Being at the center of the world getting eaten, he is feeling the impacts more than anybody else. But he knows what he's doing. He is building a weapon. He is building a nullification ray. He is inventing zero energy. This is Goliath. Galactic poison. This is what's going to take him down. The Fantastic Four, they are all beaten and tethered, but Reed Richards is able to finish this machine, running outside and pointing the ultimate nullification ray directly at Galactus. Galactus, he laughs at him, believing that there is no way a human could invent such a device. But Galactus, his hubris getting the best of him, he takes a blast from this ray and he is sliced in half. And while Reed Richards, he didn't want to kill Galactus, they truly had no other choice. The Silver Surfer, seeing that his master has been destroyed, he is now free. Free to do what he wants, go where he wants, and be whoever he wants. Taking off into the boundless universe, the Watcher on the moon recognizing that he made the right decision not to interfere. Oatu back home watching all of this happen, he cannot believe it. In complete disbelief that if he had not interfered, Reed Richards 
Richards would have figured it out. He would have been able to defeat Galactus all on his own. The Watcher finally starting to understand what he has done. Still trying to deny all of this happening, saying that it left the Fantastic Four in a very weak and disformed position. A position that would make them ill-equipped to take on future battle. His father saying, okay, let's go ahead, dig a little deeper, and see what the future has in store for the Fantastic Four. And the truth is, the planet, they prosper. With his new invention, this zero energy, he is able to transform the world. They are able to irrigate deserts, ending world hunger. They clean the skies, the seas, the land. They are able to create endless clean energy and make a brand new world for mankind. And within one year, all of this has transpired. If it hadn't been for Galactus coming down, Reed Richards may have never figured out zero energy. He would have never found an unlimited, endless source of energy to help all of humanity. They created the fantastic world. And this is the reality that the Watcher had taken away from all of humanity. With tears in his eyes, Owatu begs his father to stop. But this is his punishment. And from this moment forward, this is all he is going to ever see. That his interference, everything he has done, has stopped humanity from truly reaching its potential. With his father walking out of the room, before he leaves, Oetsu tells him that he was wrong. That his interference was the gravest of mistakes. But that doesn't change the fact that he is right about the Reckoning War. And so now the Watchers, they must discuss what the best course of action is. As it stands, Ikor says that they are not going to interfere, fearing that, that they, if they interfere any longer, if they do go any further, then the outcome could be even more drastic than the Reckoning War, wanting to let this play out as best they can. In the shadows, hiding in secret, we have Nick Fury. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in New York City. Right now, the forces of the Reckoning, they are just sitting down on the Baxter building. Building, breaking into the stronghold of the Fantastic Four. We have all of the Fantastic Four children making their escape, heading downstairs. It looks like they might get cornered in. Recognizing this situation is probably out of their hands, they need to get a hold of Mr. Fantastic. Taking us to space, that is where we pick up with Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, Jack of Hearts, and She-Hulk. They had come here to try to stop this crystal from being stolen, but they failed to do so. And in the battle, we saw that Ben was severely injured. Luckily, Jack of Hearts and his abilities are able to more or less carterize his wounds together. As these guys begin to lick their wounds, Mr. Fantastic wants to find out where they took that crystal. But that's a clue, because he doesn't know. Having the knowledge of all Watchers, they took the crystal to a place that nobody can find it. A blind spot to the Watchers. This place in the universe is known as as Obscura Minor, Mr. Fantastic now having a destination, he uses his accumulated knowledge and he is able to teleport them all to Obscura Minor. And while She-Hulk has never actually been here, she knows what this place is. This planet, empty, desolate, and wiped clean of any life that has existed. This is when Mr. Fantastic, he gets a communication from Val, letting him know the base has been overrun, that they have no other options, and it is time to initiate Protocol Zero. Mr. Fantastic giving them the confirmation. This is when everything goes silent. Tears come Coming out of his eyes, he tells Jack and She-Hulk that they need to go take a walk. He needs an opportunity to have a real heart-to-heart -heart with Ben, letting him know the reckoning. They almost took control of the Forever Gate. This couldn't be allowed to happen. Now, Ben knew that it had one more jump in it, believing that they took that jump to an undisclosed location, believing that Alicia and all of the children, they may just be stranded. He tells Ben that the problem was the game itself. They could not let that gate fall into enemy hands. And so Protocol Zero, it is in fact a self-destruct sequence. Alicia, Joe, Nikki, Mr. Fantastic's children, they are all gone. They sacrificed themselves for the good of the universe. 
as Ben takes this information in. He closes his eyes just for a moment, only to open them and see nothing but red. Picking us up with She-Hulk and Jack, they are making their way through this place and She-Hulk is divulging to Jack how she knows it. This entire world, its history, its culture, all of its achievements, no one will ever know that She-Hulk is responsible. This population, they were very big recluses. They found out that the Watchers had been watching them and they found this as a huge invasion into their privacy. Being a cosmic judge, she agreed with them. She ruled that this world would become a dark sector of space. If you're interested in finding out when this happened, go check out She-Hulk 2005 series, issue number 7. But when nobody was watching, that's when the reckoning came down on them. As she tells this story, this is where we see Wrath. Him and his army are the ones that slaughtered this entire planet, knowing that this would be the beachhead. This would be the location where they staged their war. A blind spot out of the sight of the Watchers. An opportunity to be able to build up their masses and strike all at once. As She-Hulk charges in, she quickly recognizes she is outmatched, though she tries to throw some heavy punches. As Jack is throwing every bit of energy he can, the truth is, Wrath is far too strong for this. He survived a blast that wiped out nine-tenths of all creation. He has massacred people, worlds, galaxies alike. The two of them are nothing. Taking them both and slamming their heads together, this is a fun game for him. Because the stronger one is going to survive, and they are going to know that it was their own body who killed their comrade. And so while the two of them are just getting their butts kicked, we are taken to planet T-37X, homeworld of the Watchers. And currently Nick Fury, he is eavesdropping on all of the conversations, overhearing that the great gathering is about to begin. This gathering is where all the Watchers come together, they take their knowledge, and they upload it. One of the Watchers are being set aside, being put on a different mission. This makes Nick Fury wonder what what he's up to, what makes him so special and so unique that he would be left out of this. But he also recognizes this may be the only time that he can rescue his Watcher. Currently imprisoned, nobody is going to be watching him. And so it is a perfect opportunity for a jailbreak. Throwing us all the way to the capital city of Kree and Scroll Empire. We are picking up with both Teddy and Billy. As they are fighting off all of the forces of the Reckoning, this is where some help comes in. That help comes in the form of Johnny. Emperor Hulking thanks him for making his arrival. Coming just in time, they are now able to turn the tide in this battle. Johnny letting him know that if you really want to help me, once we have freed your planet from all of this, we can go save many more worlds. Emperor Hulking more than willing to do this. They are not going to be doing it just by themselves. With Johnny asking the help of some other individuals, we see the arrival of the Star Jammers, the Guardians of the galaxy and a handful of our other friends while the forces of good are now gathering for the most epic battle we are taken back to Ben and Mr. Fantastic. Brother versus brother. The Thing versus the Stretch Man. And while Mr. Fantastic, he has been trying his best to just restrain the Thing. The truth of the matter is he is not able to. Ben is letting go with every bit of power he has. He is trying to rip him in half. Smashing Mr. Fantastic onto the ground. It looks like the thing is about to kill him. Mr. Fantastic is trying to get words out, but Ben just doesn't want to hear it. He has stood by his side day in and day out. Every mistake turning him into a monster. Every decision that he has ever made. Ben has always found a way to be right there by his side. But this time it has gone too far. Mr. Fantastic getting the opportunity. He presses a button on his suit. This button is comms to Alicia and the children. Stopping the thing right there in his tracks. He is able to talk to the people he loves. Thinking that they had died. That simply didn't happen. 
thanking the heavens that his family is still alive. Mr. Fantastic, he gets up and he says that there is work to do. Now, Ben, he's, he's not ready to just go back to work. He wants to find out what the heck that was about. You just made me believe that my entire family had died. And clearly, that wasn't a self-destruct protocol. So what happened? Mr. Fantastic lets him know that you faced Rapture and then you froze. In the past, if anybody had knocked him down, he would have got right back up and he would have fought like hell. He would have kept fighting until he won, but not this time. And as a man who knows everything right now, he knows exactly why. In the past, he had nothing to lose, but now he really does. He has a wife and a family that is waiting back home, something to live for. This has put him off his game. And in this war, the Reckoning War, everything is at stake. It's not just him. It's not just the people he loves. It is everybody. And now, next time, he won't freeze up. Next time, he will fight to the death. Because now you have something to fight for. Four. Ben letting him know that he might be right, but that doesn't mean he's going to forgive him for what he just did. Mr. Fantastic could care less. The truth being, he needed the thing at the top of his game, and now that he is, they can go help their friends. Heading over to go help Jack and Jin, this is where they find a gateway. Knowing that they have to go in there and try to save them, they walk through and they find themselves in the Barrens. The toxic remains of what was left of nine-tenths of the universe. The only thing is that Wrath has tricked them into going in here. Closing the portal behind them, the four individuals are now stuck in the Barrens. And he believes firmly that it will take them eons to learn how to get out of this place. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue 43, we are picking up in Washington DC. This is where we have the Cormorant. Now he is not here for any global or universal war. He is here on orders of the Helmsman. And what he is doing here is grabbing the Alpha Omega armor pieces. From Gauntlet to Grasshopper to Southpaw. One by one, he is stripping these heroes of their abilities, of their powers, of the armor that they are carrying on them. And he is doing this to unite the armor as one. That's what brings them to the Florida Everglades. The Helmsman has sent him here to get the last piece of the armor. Now the Helmsman, he has the control helmet. This allows him to control the Cormant. And this is where we have Doc. Dr. Doom enter the picture. With the two of them now standing off, we are taken over to the Baxter building, and we have a man calling himself Ruin of the Reckoning. While Wrath may be the individual with the fierce might, Ruin is the intellect. He knows all about the Forever Gate. Having no interest in really killing any of the Franklin kids or anything of that nature, at least not himself. He does open up the Forever Gate. He makes his exit, telling his minions to deal with these kids. Franklin and Val, before the Forever Gate closes, the two of them go rushing in. But what we do learn is it doesn't seem like the Reckoning is here to destroy the universe. It appears that they have some kind of interest in Nexus Points. Now that's what takes us to the Barons. We have the Thing, Mr. Fantastic, She-Hulk, and Jack of Hearts. Jack of Hearts, dang near dead at this point, using She-Hulk's radiation to keep him alive. The Thing, he has some huge gashes across his chest. And Reed Richards, having the knowledge of all the Watchers, he only has about three more days to live. Unfortunately for all of them, if they stay here in the Barrens too long, all of them will succumb to the atmosphere. Even with Reed Richards having all of this knowledge at his disposal, the Watchers didn't know if there was an exit to the Barrens. They didn't know how to get in or out of this place. Which means Reed Richards doesn't know how to get them out of here. Taking us back over to the Florida Everglades, we have Cormorant and Doctor Doom standing off with one another. The last time we saw them fight was Fantastic Four, issue number 25. But Doctor Doom says that that fight, he was really analyzing the capabilities of Cormorant, trying to figure out what he can do and what his limitations may be. But moreover, what he has learned. 
is that this is Watcher technology because they were there. They were a soldier of the first war. With it being this technology, it may give Doctor Doom the upper hand in the battle against the Reckoning. Meanwhile, on the other side of space, we pick up at the homeworld of the Watchers. And right now, the Reckoning battle fleet is standing right outside their door. Ikor and all of the other Watchers, they have been anticipating this for days. But what they are really concerned about is the Apex, sending Emu to go protect it while they hold the line. As they prepare for this glorious battle, we are brought over to Owatu. He is currently in prison being forced to see the possibility of Fantastic Four creating zero energy and making all of Earth prosper in a way that it never has before. This is his punishment for interfering, saying that if he never interfered, interfered, this could have been the outcome for all of Earth. That Reed Richards would have found a way to destroy Galactus without you. Nick Fury the Unseen making his way in here. He is trying to break him out. Trying to find a way to free Owatu. Messing with all of the circuitry. This is where they show him the rest of the story. Because his father and the others. They have only been showing him a piece of the story. The part of the story where the Fantastic Four save all of humanity. What they took out with that zero energy eventually it will build up it will explode it will expand and it will take over the entirety of the universe this will wipe all life from existence and this is when he realizes that his interference it was necessary that him interfering saved all of them not sure why the other watchers wanted to keep this information from him this is where they get interrupted by one of the other watchers coming in to check on the apex only to see that Nick Fury has freed Owatu letting them know that they are not allowed to leave looking like we are about to have a freaking watcher standoff that is until a gun floating in the air comes behind Imnu and smacks him in the back of the head and the person holding that gun was Sue Storm she had followed Nick Fury all this time, hoping that Nick Fury would bring her to the Watchers. That is exactly what he has done. But she has also been eavesdropping on everything going on here. So she was able to overhear about the Apex. Now, the 616 reality, it contains multiple Nexus points. Above all of these Nexus points lies the Apex, the gateway to every possibility and what-if world that you could imagine. That is what the Reckoning War is all about. The Watcher letting us know that this planet, T37X, this is home to the Apex. This isn't home to the Watchers. They come from a planet known as Lumina, a planet that had been destroyed in the First War. They had built their new home around the Apex in an effort to try and protect it. While this information is divulged to them, on the front lines, this is where we have the Watchers going to war. Individuals that never interfere, at least when it comes to the affairs of other people. But this place, this is their world, and the Watchers will stand to defend it at any cost. As the Watchers start unloading everything they have on Wrath, all of their weapons are bouncing off of him. And he lets them know that at one point in time, you were seen as gods. The truth is though, you have sat here over all of this time and you haven't evolved. You haven't become something more. You haven't even really upgraded your weaponry from the first war. But the Reckoning War, they have been preparing for this war since the first war. They know exactly what they need to get and what armor that they need to use using the crystals that they had stolen from the Fantastic Four. They used this to carve a battle armor out of. A crystal so strong that the Watcher technology doesn't work. It doesn't penetrate through it. He can walk through a hail of gunfire and not be phased in the slightest. So the battle for T37X is fully underway. 
appearing like Ikor the Watcher has met his demise, we are taken to the Florida Everglades. The Cormorant and Doctor Doom are still standing off with one another, as the Helmsman lets Cormorant know that you need to stop playing with your food, dispatch of him already, and continue your mission. Doctor Doom didn't come here to fight the Cormorant. He was only letting this battle go on long enough so that his technology could triangulate the location of Helmsman. Using a little bit of magic, after he gets a location, he teleports the Hellman directly to them, realizing that he has been bested by Doom. He goes to take his helm off to expose who he truly is, saying that Doctor Doom has earned the right to find out who is underneath the mask, saying all this time that he was actually... But he doesn't get that information out. Doctor Doom doesn't even care. As Helmsman is completely wiped, turned to straight ash, the control helmet is left there on the ground. And Doctor Doom knows that whoever controls this, controls the Cormant, one of the most powerful beings in this or any reality. This is what Doctor Doom had been after this entire time, but he's not using this to his benefit. He is not becoming the master. He did this so that he could give it to Cormant, granting him his freedom, because what Doctor Doom is offering is an alliance to fight side by side with Doctor Doom, operating untethered and at his full capacity. Alright guys, this has been an absolutely fun run, but this issue, issue number 44, it freaking knocks it out of the park. And this oversized issue, we are starting on planet T37X, the homeworld to the Watchers. The reckoning at their doorstep, we have Wrath who has made his way down to the ground round. And what we have learned is that their armor, their weaponry, it is vastly superior to anything that the Watchers have. The truth is, what they have is old Watcher technology that they have upgraded over the years. The Watchers, on the other hand, they haven't really done much when it comes to the terms of weapons, because they implemented their Do Not Interfere rule. So while they have defenses, while their weapons are very powerful, against the Reckoning, it means absolutely absolutely nothing. This is where we have Sue Storm, Nick Fury, and Uatu trying to figure out what they're gonna do. Sue Storm does believe that Imnu, the one currently passed out on the ground, he is holding on to some kind of information. Being excluded from the Cyclopedia Universum, this is when all of the Watchers, they collect their collective knowledge in a kind of mind seat. Now that Uatu thinks back, he recognizes that not only was he excluded from this, but Imnu was also excluded from everything else. Every single time they have done this, he has never been a part of it. Going and digging through his mind, finding the information he is looking for. This is where he recognizes that Imnu was at the first war. Not only was he at the first war, but he is responsible for the war to begin with. All of this time, the Watchers are the one that shot the first shot. Using all of their knowledge, he crafted the perfect instrument of war, the ultimate knowledge. Fire. He fired it, and he is the one that obliterated nine-tenths of the universe. This is the true reason that they swear they will never interfere again, because the Watchers are the ones responsible for what has happened. Of course, all of this information, it is hid from the majority of Watchers. While he comes to terms with all of this information, we are taken out to deep space. We have the Silver Surfer carrying the ultimate nullifier. Following behind him, we have Galactus in his final form, known as the Destruction. Chasing after this ultimate nullifier, Galactus is the only thing that can swallow the Apex Nexus. This is the only thing that can stop what is about to happen. To stop Wrath from getting to that Apex and doing whatever it is they choose to do with the infinite multiverse. But traveling through space, this is when three individuals appear to him. The Never Queen, Eternity, and the Griever. These are the three faces of existence, and they are letting the Silver Surfer know that he is out of time. The Reckoning has already reached the door, and they are about to make their way to the Nexus. 
Galactus may be the only thing that can swallow the Apex Nexus. The problem is, he is not going to get there in time. But the Silver Surfer, he can go and stall them. He can get there faster than Galactus could. And so with Silver Surfer leaving behind a cosmic trail for Galactus to follow, he takes off as fast as he can possibly go. The ultimate nullifier being their only solution at this point. As he goes flying through space, we take up elsewhere. And we have Ruin of the Reckoning. He is the one that went to the Forever Gate. Walking through it, we saw both Val and Franklin chase after him. He had used the Forever Gate to get himself inside the Apex Nexus. Believing that he is the first one here, he begins cheering and having a good time. Off to the side, we see the Fantastic Four kids more or less laughing at him. Because the truth is, Val had programmed the Forever Gate prior to anybody using it, a failsafe just in case someone tampered with it. It would send them to a very specific location, and that is Thought Space. Something that was more or less recently discovered at Fantastic Four. In this place, wherever your every thought is, it is made into a reality. So with Ruin thinking that he was getting to the Apex Nexus, that is exactly what it shows him. Believing that he still has the upper hand in this situation, he very much underestimates Franklin. At one time having cosmic power, he used to imagine entire universes. So in thought space, he is a freaking god. And so as the Fantastic Four kids take care of these guys, we are taken to the Barrens. Trapped in this place, we have Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, She-Hulk, and Jack of Hearts. Jack of Hearts, he is dying here, while She-Hulk is trying to share her radiation. It's just not enough. Not only that, Reed Richards is dying. We can see the transformation. He is slowly beginning to look more and more like a Watcher. But the thing is, he's not going to have some permanent form to take on a Watcher. This is just what is happening before he dies. Having only like 10 hours left, he finally figures out how they're going to escape. Because at the end of the day, he is Reed Richards. Combine that with the power that he currently has, and we see him begin to build a forever gate. Now, as he constructs this, he lets them know that there is only one real problem, a power source. A forever gate, it requires zero energy, or at least something similar. And that is why Jack of Hearts is here to begin with. Reed Richards had brought him on board just in case they needed his abilities, in case they needed his powers. And that's actually very interesting because currently in the She-Hulk line, with Jack of Hearts, they're having discussions about things of this very nature. Everybody sees him as nothing more than a power battery, a source of immaculate power and energy. And Ben cannot believe how Reed Richards is just being so nonchalant about this whole situation. He doesn't even recognize his friend any longer. But nonetheless, this is where we see Jack of Hearts, he uses his ability abilities and he charges up the forever gate. The thing is, Jack of Hearts, he has to stay behind. For the Forever Gate to stay open, he has to constantly be hitting it with power, which means everyone can walk through except for him. They also know that this means Jack of Hearts will more than likely die. This place is already draining him of everything he has. If there is no way for him to get back, he will more than likely meet his demise. As Mr. Fantastic, The Thing, and She-Hulk all make their way through. The gate closes and Jack is left alone, taking us back to planet T37X. We have Wrath making his way into the Grand Hall where all of the Watchers are. All of them connected, unaware that he is right here in the palace. He is completely unconcerned with all of them. The truth is, he wants to get to the Apex as quickly as possible. If they waste their time killing all of the Watchers, something could happen, something could stop them, something could interfere in all of their plans. And though they believe that this place was going to be empty, at the entrance to the Apex, this is where we have Doctor Doom and Cormorant, the Alpha Omega Armor. 
being gifted the helmet by Doctor Doom, an unstoppable force now on the side of all the universe, fighting against Wrath and the Reckoning. Picking up outside the planet in the space, we have the Reckoning's battle fleet, a flash of silver light. The Silver Surfer comes in to find Ben, Mr. Fantastic, and She-Hulk about ready to rip off Reed Richards head, especially after what he just did to Jack, knowing that he would have to sacrifice himself, using him as nothing more than a power battery. She's ready to tear him to pieces. Silver Surfer obviously recognizing everything that is going on with Reed Richards, recognizing that he has had drastic changes, but none of that is of true importance because right now the entire universe is about to be taken down as they make their way onto the planet's surface. They run into the Watcher and Sue Storm. She hasn't seen Reed Richards for quite some time, seeing his transformation, seeing that he has lied to her. She is absolutely livid, but they have to focus on the task at hand. Uatu letting it be known that he is going to connect his mind with all of the others and let them know the truth. Let them know who truly started this war and wiped out nine tenths of the universe. Opening all of their eyes, the Fantastic Four, they head off to try and fight the Reckoning. That's where we have Doctor Doom and our Alpha Omega taking them on. But Wrath is not terrified of the Coromon. The truth is, this is their design. They built it. They created this monster. And while it has the capability to kill them, to take them down, this is old technology for them. And Wrath is able to say a code and completely shut it down. This puts Doom in an absolute disbelief. Not even knowing that that was possible. Having the powers of more or less a god to be able to be shut down with simply a code word completely baffles Dr. Doom. Doom has underestimated his enemy. Their technology, their skills and ability are so vastly superior to anything that they have. Much like Rapture's Warblades, the greatest achievement of the Reckoning, said to be the greatest weapons in the arsenal of the Reckoning. This is where they get some help. Having the arrival of the Silver Surfer, he comes flying in and Rapture cuts his board in half. It falls down to the ground, and then we have the arrival of the Fantastic Four. And though they believe that they can really overcome all of the foes in front of them, Wrath knows the one thing that could take them down is the ultimate nullifier. As Rapture goes in to try to grab it, we have the Thing having round two with Rapture. As she goes down to use her Warblades on the Thing, they disappear out of her hands. Sue Storm had turned them invisible, dropping them, they are now on the ground, unable to be seen. This gives the Thing a, a real even playing field to take on Rapture. But even with that, Rapture is able to punch him so hard, we see chunks of rock breaking off of him. And if all of this wasn't enough, this is where we see the destruction. The final form of Galactus has arrived. Everybody trying to stop Wrath from making his way to the apex. Nothing they are using is strong enough. And then Johnny Storm makes his arrival. Bringing in the cavalry, he has everybody on board. Imperial Guard, Kree, Scrolls, Heralds, Guardians, Starjammers. They all come in and they are stalling Galactus. Because Galactus really is their last resort. If he did this, it would be absolutely devastating. But it would save 616. The ultimate nullifier being their last option. With Reed Richards on the brink of death as is. He is the one that grabs hold of it. He points it before Wrath is able to make it to the heart of the apex. Everything goes white. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number 45, we are picking up at the Baxter building. And we have Ben, who arrives on the rooftop, greeted by his wife and adopted children. He is finally back home. After the Reckoning War, after everything that has happened, he is back with those he loves. 
to find out how he got here. We are thrown one hour into the past. That is what takes us to planet T37X, home world of the Watchers. And with everything going sideways, our legion of heroes doing everything they can to rescue every single Watcher off of this planet before it is destroyed. But there is one Watcher who cannot be evacuated. With Nick Fury by his side, we pick up with Owatu. And right now, something is happening to him. He is gathering every single thought that every single Watcher has ever had. Everything that they have ever seen scene every secret that is kept out of the encyclopedia. He is seeing everything all at once. But right now, the apex is about to explode. Nick Fury letting him know that they have to get out of here. That's what takes us inside the apex of all reality. We have the Fantastic Four, She-Hulk, Doctor Doom, and the Silver Surfer. Using the ultimate nullifier, they were able to take down Wrath of the Reckoning. With him being being nullified, this battle has already been won. With Reed Richards using the ultimate nullifier, it took away all of his Watcher ability, shrinking his head back down to size, believing that he only had a matter of moments to live. The nullifier took away all of that power and made him normal yet again. Of course, Doctor Doom going on about how he already knew that was going to happen. That was the most logical way for things to play out. Johnny Storm being done hearing him talk at all. Johnny goes in to take him down, only for the Cormont to grab hold of him. Because Cormorant, he is now more or less friends with Doctor Doom. Doctor Doom granting him his freedom in the last issue. But right now, they don't have the time for bickering. They are still inside the apex of all reality. And Wrath's armor, it is on the verge of self-destruction. If it self-destructs, this is going to be felt throughout every single universe inside the apex of all reality. Believing that their only option is to take it back to their universe because at least their universe will be damaged while all of the others, they will remain intact. This gives Silver Surfer a great idea. Him and Johnny Storm together, they take Rass Armor and they head back to 616. Because back on 616, we have Galactus the Destroyer Galactus giving a gift to his former master. We see Silver Surfer and Johnny, they throw this into Galactus. As Galactus begins to eat this thing up, from the inside, Galactus begins to self-destruct. Being able to contain the blast, every single possibility has been saved. And the first war, it has finally reached its conclusion. One of the downsides, the Watcher's home planet, also on the brink of destruction. There is no saving it. With its detonation, we see Owatu being able to see everything. He is now the one and only Watcher, his former race. All of them being saved, they no longer have the ability to see anything. Owatu, he absorbed all of the knowledge from the Apex. He sees every what if, every what could be, and every what should be. Recognizing now how they are responsible for so much death and destruction. What he is about to do, it has nothing to do with interfering. It has everything to do with rectifying, bringing everybody to the barrier. This is the very edge of existence. The Great Barrier erected by his people to hold the fallout of the First War. This is what's known as the Barons. Believing that this barrier has stood for long enough, the Watcher takes down the barrier. In an instant, he restores nine-tenths of the universe. Because remember, the Reckoning War, it caused nine-tenths of the universe to be destroyed. After the First War, it was referred to as the Barons. Now that has been restored. Marvel Universe has been working with one-tenth of the entire universe for all of this time. Now we are learning that it has opened up. The entire universe is back. All of the damage that his kind has inflicted upon time and space 
it has finally been undone. What was once known as the Barrens is now known as the Borderlands. New worlds, new magic, new science, and new gods. A canvas of infinite possibilities. Not only that, we have the Jack of Hearts who is brought back to She-Hulk. The TVA showing up on site, recognizing that the Great Barrier is down, the Reckoning War is over. Their records will now show that this is the best possible timeline. Not only that, we see the birth of eight quadrillion worlds, but there is still one last thing that must be done. The Resurrection of Galactus. Emerging from this destruction, Galactus is reborn, and there is one question on everybody's mind. Does he hunger? And Galactus does hunger, but he hungers for knowledge of these new borderlands. Talking to the Silver Surfer, he says that he requires a herald, some kind of guide to take him through these new worlds. And the Silver Surfer lets him know that he will be no herald. He will be no guide. What he will be is a traveling companion for Galactus. And so the two of them, they take off into the unknown, having nine tenths of the universe to now explore. Their journey is just beginning. The Destroyer now being restored, Thor would like to take it back to the vaults of Asgard. Being all the way out here in the middle of nowhere, the Watcher makes quick work and teleports almost everybody back to where they belong. Once he has righted all of these wrongs, he vows that he will watch and interfere no more. And many people, they don't believe him. The truth of the matter, the Watchers say they don't interfere, but they have interfered so many times. One of the downsides, Johnny Storm, hoping that after Reed Richards had all that knowledge of the Watchers, he would be able to fix Johnny. The problem is, Reed Richards doesn't have that knowledge any longer. And it appears that the Watcher has no intention of fixing Johnny Storm. In a fit of rage, taking off with his ex, aka Sky. They take off into the unknown, Ben being teleported back to the Baxter building, the Cormorant being teleported to Shi'ar space, and what he asks Gladiator and all of the others is if he can stand watch over the three, Ruin, Wrath, and Imnu, the three individuals that were responsible for this war from the very beginning, trapped inside the crystal. These heroes will stand watch over this, ensuring that nobody ever tries to take it again. Sue Storm and Mr. Fantastic, they come walking through the Forever Gate, making their way back to the basement of the Baxter building. They are looking for their children. What they do not know is that they are currently in thought space. Once they are able to actually get in communication with them, they let the kids know that they can return, that they can come back home, it is completely safe. The only problem, Franklin does not want to go. Inside of thought space, his every thought becomes reality. In this place, he is a god. And as his parents try to coerce him into coming back, he says the only way that he will come back is if he can keep his powers. To use his power on himself and make him back how he used to be. With no argument from his parents, we have Franklin who is returning from the thought space and he is returning as powerhouse with everything back where it belongs there is one last thing and we see the watcher he takes the moon and he puts it back together the watcher's moon base is still there and this is where we have nick fury holding on to the ultimate nullifier the watcher lets him know that he can think of nobody better but Nick Fury to keep eyes on it. This now is his watchtower. Henceforth, he is once more the man on the wall, the unseen, and humanity's shield. 
And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. You know, like I said, everything has changed, but nothing has changed. We have nine tenths of the freaking universe. Universe that has not been explored, that nobody has been to, which means this opens up the door for so many possibilities. So many new gods, new races, new magic. The possibilities are limitless. But I think the most important thing of this entire comic, Franklin Richards, he now has his power back. He is now back to being the reality warper known as Powerhouse. And this is huge. This is Dan Slott saying, you know what? I am going to give this back to everybody. Because when he first got onto this, that was one of the first things that he took off the board was Franklin's reality warping abilities. And now that his run has finally come to an end, he has righted that wrong. He has opened up the Marvel Universe and he has given us so much more to explore. So you can say whatever you want about Dan Slott's run of the Fantastic Four. In my eyes, he has rectified every single mistake that he has done during this run. He has turned the clock back and fixed it all. If he hadn't given Franklin his powers back, I might have a whole different tune on this. But the fact that we have Powerhouse back into the mix, this is freaking huge. The only problem, he leaves the Fantastic Four on a very bumpy road. All of the members, they are currently going in their opposite directions. Johnny Storm has already left. Ben is definitely on the outs with Mr. Fantastic. So what the Fantastic Four will look like moving forward, that is going to be very interesting. How will Mr. Fantastic bring this group back together again? But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your theories. If you are trying to get completely caught up on everything that happened with the Reckoning War, be sure to check out the link in my description as well as the top of this video. It is going to get you completely caught up on everything going on with this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by hitting the super thanks button. This button will let you donate directly to the channel and every little bit helps us out. Now if you can't do that, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, make sure you like this video, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.